You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much love drive a man insane. You broke my will. Oh, what a thrill. Great green gobs, a greasy, grimy gopher god. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade, and welcome back to my whole darn CD collection. Yes, it's been three friggin' months since I've done a chapter of this. We last left off with chapter 14. So uh, yeah, finally, after an unplanned three-month hiatus, I am back. In every episode of my Hold On CD collection, I show you the next 90 CDs. I chose that number because that's what fit in the two individual single row uh, CD crates that I used at the beginning. Now I'm using this one double-decker one. Uh, it can fit more than 90, but I figure for consistency, consistency sake, I stick with 90. But I do have a little extra ground to cover today because since it's been so long, I have quite a few uh, recent arrivals. That's the stuff that fits in the chapters, the part of the alphabet that I've covered before uh, since I filmed those chapters. So let's go ahead and get started. I, I might be, uh, these might be some that I have repeated, that I've already stated, you know, were new arrivals. I, I lost track, obviously, since there's been three months. Uh, and I might be missing some also, but uh, just for, you know, because I didn't want to spend forever dissecting all my videos, I figure get about, oh, but there's about a dozen here, new arrivals, or recent arrivals. So let's go ahead and go through those very quickly. Uh, first we have Air, uh, Le Voyage dans la Lune. This is a uh, concept album around the old silent movie A Trip to the Moon. That is the French, uh, the title in French. No, that's the title in English. You know what I mean. And this actually is one that I found. I had had this CD before, but it was a little, it was a little too high concept for me back then. Uh, but I've kind of been thinking about it ever since. And this one I found at Epic Seconds, and it's the deluxe edition, which has a DVD of the original movie <clears throat> in it. So yeah, kind of uh, helps put the album in context. And it's just kind of a cool, interesting concept for an album. Uh, Air has always been a little bit, uh, a little bit out there, a little bit avant-garde. But anyway, the next one here is Argent, uh, the Argent Anthology, uh, a collection of greatest hits. This is a rock band that was popular in the 70s, end of the 60s through, through the 70s. Um, what is the... Uh, oh, they, they do a cover of uh, the Zombies' Time of the Season, but uh, also God Gave Rock and Roll to You, which uh, Kiss made a sequel song to it. Uh, you know, many years later, and so that's kind of how where that song's claim to fame lies. Argent may have had a bigger hit that I'm not familiar with or couldn't recognize from the title, but anyway. Uh, pretty decent rock band, and I found that actually in the $1 section at House of Records. Uh, next we have The Bird and the Bee, with a um, Interpreting the Masters Volume 1, a tribute to Daryl Hall and John Oates. Hall and Oates is one of my favorite bands of the 80s, so how could I pass this one up? It's a nine-track a CD covering uh, a selection of their biggest hits, uh, done, uh, covered by The Bird and the Bee. So, very cool. The only Bird and the Bee album that I have, by the way. Uh, and then we have Combat Rock by The Clash. This one I might have uh, already talked about, uh, or at least in, uh, in a recent haul video. And that's one of the things I tried to avoid with this recent Rivals, is I didn't want to repeat the stuff that I've gotten in my hauls, and of course the stuff, um, the keepers from the bargain bag videos. Obviously I don't want to re regurgitate those. But anyway, uh, Combat Rock by The Clash, um, Should I Stay or Should I Go, and Rock the Casbah are the two big hits off of here. It, they were rather new wavy, uh, very different from the stuff that they had done previously. So. Uh, of course, being an 80s kid, that's where I first became aware of The Clash. Of course, I also have their album London, London Calling, which is fantastic, by the way. Even if you're not a punk fan, listen to London Calling by The Clash. It, it, it's, it's not just punk. Uh, and then we have Judy Collins. Uh, this is her, um, the very best of Judy Collins. A great selection of, of 60s folk singer, primarily from the 60s. She went on uh, in decades since then. Uh, all of the stuff that you hear, you've heard uh, the Birds and other bands from that era cover. Uh, turn, turn, turn to everything. There's a season, and then we have uh, both sides now, which was uh, I can't remember if Judy Collins or Joni Mitchell had the more popular version of that. Uh, but yeah, Amazing Grace. She does a cover of that. Uh, but yeah, 
very beautiful voice. Judy Collins has a gorgeous voice. Uh, so if you've never listened to her, check her out. And then I've also, I think I might have talked about these in a haul video, so I'll go over them very quickly. Uh, one of the female folkish singer-songwriters, folk pop singer-songwriters that I've kind of uh, developed a liking to recently is Sean Colvin. And I've got her uh, first album, City On, her second album, Fat City. <laughs> I have to read the titles because I my memory is not the greatest. And then a covers album called Cover Girl. And it actually, uh, the first track on here is Every Little Thing He Does Is Magic. So it's a cover of the Police song uh, with a, a gender swapped because she's a female singer. So yeah, very good stuff. And then we have Roberta Flack, the very best of. Uh, of course, the, 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 the title track, Killing Me Softly, is one of her biggest hits. And I could probably recite the entire track listing. Uh, but she, yeah, she is one of the preeminent soul R&B singers of the 70s. Uh, I think 70s was when she hit the height of her popularity. But yeah, very, very good stuff. And then uh, a band that, made, that uh, got its start in Oklahoma, or uh, the band members are from Oklahoma, uh, the Flaming Lips. I decided to give them a try. Uh, now, these guys, you know, talk about air uh, being uh, avant-garde and kind of tri trippy. These guys are even more so, but uh, I've got their two most successful albums here, uh, The Soft Bulletin and Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. Interesting stuff. I don't know if I will go further in their discography, but uh, yeah. kind of cool. Something different in my in my CD collection. You know, I, I like to have a fairly well-rounded uh, library of music. And then we have Genesis with uh, their two uh, the, their two part live album. The Way We Walk, uh, this is Volume 1, The Shorts, and also picked up Volume 2, The Longs. So yeah, all of their big hits um, in a live concert albums. Very, very good stuff. Then we have Janet Jackson with her classic album, I think her best al best-selling album, Control. I've also got um, Rhythm Nation 1814, I think that's what it's called. But uh, yeah, I mean, all the hits, her biggest hits are on here. Nasty, What Have You Done For Me Lately?, uh, and con Control, obviously, is uh, the title track is another hit, so yeah, great stuff. This one I picked up just recently, and it is um, superseding a one-disc hits collection I have of his, B.B. King. Uh, as I've mentioned before, my sister absolutely adored B.B. King, uh, and, and as a consequence, I've kind of come to like him, too. So yes, this is a two-disc set that I found for one dollar at Epic Seconds. One dollar, and just a couple little tiny scratches on the discs. The jewel case was absolutely thrashed, so I had to get a new, uh, put it into a new jewel case. But uh, yeah, for a buck, for all these songs, their prices are insane! Anyway, and now this next one has an interesting story. Uh, I have the one disc uh, domestic version of this. It is um, Deja Vu by Giorgio Moroder, his 2015 album, I think. And twice, or is it three times, I tried to order the Japanese import version, which has several extra tracks on it, and it's one, uh, I believe it's just one disc, it might be two, uh, and the first time I tried to order it, I guess my first clue was that it was for a really good deal on Amazon Marketplace, and I should have known better for a Japanese CD. Uh, first time I ordered it, uh, it was in the, I uh, listing was under the Japanese version, so that's what I expected to get, and it was the domestic U.S. version that I already had, and uh, about three or four months ago, I tried to order, to order it again. I found, you know, another good price on it, but this turns out to be the Singapore or Malaysian, like the Southeast Asian version. Uh, it is two discs, uh, but it has a few of the songs on it on the Japanese version are not on here, a couple of remixes, uh, but this does have the other bonus tracks that are the Jap on the Japanese version. But then it's in a digipack, as you can see, and it's two discs. Uh, so yeah, I, I mentioned, hey, you know, talk to the buyer and said, hey, you gave me the wrong version. He said, uh, go ahead and keep it, and he gave me my, my money back. So for now, I'm going to hold on to it. The discs were in fine condition. It was new and sealed. So uh, at some point, I will probably try and actually get the Japanese version of it. So anyway, and that was a long story, wasn't it? Anyway, the last two recent arrivals are... Nana Muskuri, I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but yeah, she's a singer who's been around for a long, long time. This is a, an album of hers, The Magic Of, and I also have a uh, 
which I would have shown you in the last chapter, I think, a uh, 20th century Millennium Collection uh, budget-priced hits compilation. But yeah, this one has some uh, interesting selections in here. Uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water, she does a rendition of the Simon and Garfunkel song. And then uh, Never on Sunday, which I think is a... Is it a Great American Songbook thing? I don't know. And uh, Amazing Grace, kind of like... Uh, what was the other one? Oh, Judy Collins did Amazing Grace. Um, Morning Has Broken, the Cat Stevens song. And Love Me Tender, the, the Elvis Presley song. And Nights in White Satin, which is the Moody Blues song. So she does kind of a wide range of uh, things on here. So anyway, so that's... Oh, that actually was the last recent arrival. So now on to the main section of my... Uh, the next chapter of my Hold On CD collection, chapter 15. We last left off with the first album by Natural, which was a boy band uh, done by, um, created by Lou Pearlman, the guy who was the mastermind, the Svengali behind NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. He created these guys. Lots of great hooks on these albums. Um, the uh, publicity was that these guys played their own instruments. I kind of doubt it, you know, knowing that, you know, Pearlman's... Uh, a habit of uh, bending the truth, shall we say. But anyway, great hooky stuff. Ear candy, complete ear candy. Not a lot of substance to the songs, but I liked it enough that I picked up their sophomore album, It's Only Natural. So, yeah. Decent stuff, you know. What the heck. I, you gotta have your ear candy, right? In addition to the meat and potatoes. Try to uh, keep the dry throat syndrome at bay with uh, water. Next up, we have Rick Nelson, uh, Greatest Hits. This is, you know, the, he was a teen idol back in the 50s and uh, eventually uh, came to have a fairly res respectably uh, popular so uh, adult solo career. And yes, he, unfortunately, he passed away in a plane crash in the late 80s, early 90s. I can't remember, but yeah. Unfortunate end to a, uh, to a teen idol who was a pretty darn talented singer. So, yes, um, yeah, so... Uh, Oh, Poor Little Fool was one of his uh, big hits. And uh, I'm trying to... Oh, Hello, Mary Lou was a big, big hit of his. And uh, so, yeah, good stuff. Then we are on to uh, a, an artist I have several albums by. I have probably more albums on vinyl than I have on CD of his uh, now. But yes, Willie Nelson. Uh, this was in my sister's collection, his first big album of um, uh, Great American Songbook Standards, Stardust. Beautiful, beautiful album. That, this is kind of what got me going on Willie Nelson. Uh, I mean, you know, his his um, self-penned or, you know, his original country material is good, but he did a, such a great job on all those old standards. Just great stuff. And then uh, these next two I bought fairly recently. Uh, we have Milk Cow Blues. I think uh, this was in a haul video. I think I got this up in Portland. And this is a collaborative, collaborative album with a bunch of blues artists. Uh, um, chief among them, uh, well, chief for me, Kev Mo is on here. And we have, I am having trouble reading this. Why am I, oh, um, Francine Reed, Dr. John, Johnny Lang, who's a blues artist, Susan Tedeschi, B.B. King. So, yeah, an all-star lineup for an all-star artist, Willie Nelson. Can one person be all-star? I don't know, anyway. And uh, then the next, I believe the f uh, subsequent album to Milk Cow Blues, Rainbow Connection. This one, I saw this one at, Epi uh, at uh, House of Records a few months back. And I didn't even realize he made an album like this. But when I looked at the track listing, just all sorts of great songs. Um, some songs that are, wh what would you call them? Uh, not really childhood favorites, but uh, um, songs that bring out the inner child in all of us. You know, Rainbow Connection. I'm looking over a four-leaf clover. Uh, Won't you ride in my little red wagon? You know, just all sorts of fun songs. But there's one that's on on here that is absolutely hilarious. I'm my own grandpa. Listen to that song. It is great. I, I think somebody else made it famous before Willie Nelson did it on this album. But just the the lyrics are absolutely hilarious. And uh, oh, and he, he does a cover of "Just Dropped In to See What Condition My Condition Is In," which was from. Oh, Kenny Rogers and the first ed first edition. Kenny Rogers' first band before he went solo. So, yeah, a very, very fun album. I love that one. That's one of those albums that my sister would have absolutely loved. So, yeah, whenever I listen to it, it brings back memories of my sister, even though she never owned it. 
far as I know. Then we have a couple of uh, uh, collaborative albums. Uh, a live one here, uh, Live and Kickin' with Friends. Uh, you've got Ray Charles, Kenny Chesney, Eric Clapton, Elvis Costello, Wyclef Jean, Nora Jones, Toby Keith, Diana Krall. I mean, and, and that's only about half the list. I mean, you know, you can freeze frame it and look at the uh, credits on here. But yeah, just an all-star lineup doing some of his own songs, some of the songs that the guest artists made famous, you know, he, him joining them on their songs. Great, great album. And then we have, this was another one that was in my sister's collection, Willie Nelson and Wynton Marsalis in with uh, Two Men with the Blues. Wonderful, wonderful bluesy album. And yeah, this kind of got me a little, kind of got me started when I listened to this as I was going through my, making my way through my sister's collection. Uh, kind of got me a little bit interested in blues. So, yeah. Caledonia, the um, Louis Jordan hit, and uh, Bright Lights, Big City, Georgia on My Mind, the Ray Charles classic. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. And then we have, as you might have seen in the thumbnail, the essential Willie Nelson, wrapping it all up, you know, uh, his greatest hits from his entire career. Great stuff. And then we have, uh, a, I was going to say the complete discography, but I think they put out an album uh, that I don't have, at least not yet. Neon Trees. Uh, this is their first album, Habits, and a, a great um, synthwave kind of band. Uh, their sophomore album, uh, Picture Show, <clears throat> and their most recent album that I have, Pop Psychology. And uh, this one's probably my favorite. Uh, yeah, just really, really enjoy it. Uh, lots of great songs on here. Then we have, uh, for those of you who are Weezer fans, you might like these guys. Nerf Herder. Yes, the the and any band whose name is a Star Wars reference, I'm kind of I'm I'm there. So uh, yeah, I, I give these guys a try. A little bit punkish, uh, and uh, you know the lyrics are kind of clever. Like we, maybe not as clever as Weezer's lyrics, but uh, lots of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the tracks on here is called Van Halen. Uh, this was obviously a long time before uh, Eddie left us, but. Uh, Good stuff. And then we have uh, the Neville Brothers and Aaron Neville. Well, first we've got the Neville Brothers. Uh, this was a bargain bag keeper from several months ago. Uh, Family Groove. Good, good stuff on here. Lots of great soul on uh, from Aaron Neville and the Neville Brothers. Then we have uh, this actually was another bargain bag keeper from just last month, I think. Aaron Neville, uh, Warm Your Heart. This has his hit song, Everybody Plays the Few... Why do I keep wanting to say everybody plays the fuel? No. Everybody pays for fuel. Yeah, like gas and stuff. But no, everybody plays the fool is the name of that song. Of course, you know that that would have been a great Weird Al parody. Al could have said everybody pays for fuel. He could have made a song like that. A lost opportunity. Anyway, uh, then we have a uh, hits collection, the very best of Aaron Neville, which obviously has that song on there. Everybody pays for fuel. As well as, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, oh gosh, there are other songs on here that, why is it that I want, I look at the track list, I cannot think of the names of the songs, um, oh, Betcha by Golly Wow, that's a great, great song, and, uh, oh, Don't, Mo Don't Know Much with Linda Ronstadt, I believe, the print is so small and is against a dark background, so I can't really read it. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, I, I've, I've come to really enjoy Aaron Neville. I, he was uh, not in my collection for, for far too long a period. I, I'm kind of almost upset with myself that I didn't discover him until recently. Then we have a, I believe this guy was a German Idol um, a finalist. His name is Nevio, Nevio Passaro. Uh, he was, I believe, Italian by, uh, by birth or by heritage. But he was he competed in the German Idol competition, and he sings. This album is great because he sings in German, English, uh, Spanish, and Italian, I believe. So yeah, at least four four languages, maybe maybe even more. So yes, a very entertaining album. Um, uh, just self titled Nevio. Then we have a, a guilty pleasure or a not so guilty pleasure, if ever there was one. New Kids on the Block. Hey, that was. I mean, okay, I maybe was a little bit old for, you know, older than 
the core New Kids on the Block fans when they made it big in the late 80s, early 90s. But still, as I said, you got to have some ear candy in your uh, collection. This is uh, their album, Hangin' Tough. The, uh, yeah, um, Hangin' Tough was a, a hit for them, and uh, you got it, the right stuff. And Please Don't Go Girl, I'll Be Loving You Forever. There were a lot of hits on this album. I, I for almost forgot how many great hits there were on this one. And then their follow-up album, Step by Step. Uh, the the title track on this one is one of my favorite New Kids songs. Uh, and they also did the song Tonight. That's another good... Uh, oh, there was another popular single on here. And Call It What You Want was another hit. So, okay. what, the, what can I say? Like I said, life's too short to be a music snob. And then we have... This guy is one that you probably have not heard of. Uh, his name is Brian Newman. And I picked this up. This was one of the last CDs that I picked up at Skips, or at least the one of the last ones that I got off of their new release wall. Uh, this one was... Um, he is a trumpeter that has uh, performed with uh, Lady Gaga's band, and she actually makes a guest appearance on this album. Uh, she does vocals on the song Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, which was an... It was made famous by the Animals, and it's been covered by a bunch of people, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, she she's, uh, uh, appears on here. And I believe most of the rest of the album is instrumental. But yeah, he does the song Spooky, which was... Uh, that was also by, done by a 60s band. Um, Life's a little crazy with a spooky little girl like like you. That's the way the chorus goes. And Pennies from Heaven, uh, Dancing in the Moonlight, Sun, Sunday in New York. So yeah, a lot of Great American Songbook and uh, pop classic standards on here. So yeah, a very good album. If you like a little bit of jazz in your pop, check him out. And then one of my favorite... Uh, vocalists from the 2010s, I think. Uh, John Newman. Yeah, he's, uh, this is his debut album, Tribute. And uh, Love Me Again was one of the big hits of his. Uh, he, yeah, he hasn't made an album in a long time, in years. He actually hasn't made a solo album since Revolve, which was done in 2015. So yeah, it's been uh, eight years, almost nine years. And uh, yeah, and, uh, actually the actor Idris Elba, makes a vocal appearance on the opening track on this, which is interesting. He does kind of a bit of a, a like a narration, sort of. He, he doesn't sing, he just narrates, which is an interesting uh, thing. But yeah, I love John Newman. He's one of those singers who, um, when on the uh, the DJ uh, EDM albums the, that have a bunch of, you know, they're done by a DJ and a bunch of guest vocalists are on it, if John Newman appears on an, an album of theirs, I am very, very likely to buy it and keep it in my collection. I've got several, well, three or four anyway, with John Newman appearances in there, just mostly just because he hasn't made an album since 2015. So I'm, I'm kind of hungry for uh, some more John Newman. So if you're listening, John, make a new album, please. Anyway, and then we have the very best of Randy Newman, or I guess it's just the best of. It's not the very best of. That, that, that's, that stuff's safe for another CD. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you know a lot of his uh, songs. Uh, Mama Told Me Not to Come, uh, Sail Away, Rednecks. Uh, he, he he does a lot of political satire, in, or at least did, in a lot of his songs. Uh, Rednecks and uh, Short People, that's... A lot of people have taken that song the wrong way. It's, uh, you know, it's meant to be sat satirical and... Uh, and let's see, what else? Um, oh, I Love L.A., that was a big pop hit of his in the, in the uh, 80s. And, of course, he's done a couple songs for animated movies. Uh, You've Got a Friend in Me is on here. But he did another one that I don't think is on here. I Actually, I think it, it might have been done in a movie that was put out after the CD was done. But, uh, yes, You've Got a Friend in Me from Toy Story is on here. Good stuff. And then this one was, uh, I picked this up for 4 or $5 at House of Records, couple of years ago, and it's just great. As you can tell by the cover, it's got a very much of a Jackson 5, uh, late 60s, er, early 70s pop vibe to it, a pop soul, pop r and B, I I guess you'd say. The New Respects is the name of this band, and the album is called Before the Sun Goes Down. And yes, a great, great album by these guys. I don't think they've put out another one. I could be wrong, but I haven't searched on the web in a while. So, but yeah, this was just... I just saw the cover and it just looked like something I would enjoy. As I as I said, it looked very very uh, 70s, very very Jackson Five ish, and I was not disappointed in it. Very good. Album. Oh, what was my favorite song in here? 
Um, oh, Frightening Lightning. That's a good one. I enjoyed that one. But hey, the whole album is great. And then we have May She Rest in Peace, Olivia Newton-John, a two-disc gold collection. Uh, there's lots of great, great hits on here. I won't go into uh, the songs in her discography. You know you know them, you love them. Just, uh, she was a great, great pop singer. And she dabbled in country as well. So, Next one, we have another international idol. This time from Norway. And his name is Kurt Nielsen. And uh, within the first couple of years of the whole idol thing, they had a world idol, which brought together the winners of a handful of uh, idol competitions. And Kurt Nielsen actually won world idol. So by, by that reckoning, you could say he's the best of all idol singers. I, I mean, hey, I like him. I really enjoy him. He's got he's got a great voice and makes great songs. But yeah. was he the deserving of the world idol? And I think I've heard that Simon Cowell kind of uh, resented that. And I don't think it was his ideal. I, I think they kind of um, the uh, corporate people kind of roped him into doing that world idol thing. He he just you know all the the all the other participants. It made them all look like losers. Was Simon Cowell's big complaint, and he and he was right. So uh, I wasn't around to watch uh, the world idol. I was not a fan of idol at that point. But anyway, and I've also got Kurt Nielsen's sophomore album, A Part of Me. And oh, by the way, on his first album, uh, he does a cover of uh, Tal Backman's song, uh, She's So High. And that was one of his big, his big singles. And uh, Here She Comes was a good song. Uh, he does a cover of Ordinary World by Duran Duran. And, uh, oh, and U2's Beautiful Day is on this uh, debut album. And on the sophomore album, let's see. I am, the song titles are not ringing a bell for me as far as uh, standout songs. I, it's been a while since I've listened to uh, Kurt Nilsson. And then I've also got his third album, Push Push. And uh, that was a good song, Push Push. And uh, every once in a while, and tearing me up inside, was, uh, were good songs as well, so yeah. Somehow I remember this album a little bit more than his sophomore album. But, yeah. He's a good artist. I would recommend checking him out if you're curious about the various World uh, Idol alumni. Check him out. And then we've got some a, a little bit of Star Trek for you here in the middle of my collection. Spaced Out. Uh, the, the best of Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner. Yes. I, I don't have... Actually, I do have not a complete Shatner discography, but close to. But this is the only uh, album that I have uh, any significant amount of Leonard Nimoy on. So yeah, they are. It's uh, the two of them kind of uh, alternating in their their most popular songs. Yes, yeah, so some very interesting music on here. Yeah, let me tell you, uh, it's it's kind of defies this description. You really have to hear it to appreciate it. Especially Leonard Nimoy's uh, song renditions. Anyway, now on to something a little bit more, uh, a little more contemporary and a little more well known. The 1975 with their uh, debut album. Uh, you're all familiar with that. A little bit of, a little bit of synthwave stuff here, and their sophomore album. Uh, I like it when you sleep. That that's where I, to to cut the title short. That's what I call it. I like it when you sleep. And then, uh, just because I, I do own the, the uh, LP, the vinyl version of this, but I have not gotten rid of the CD yet, their album from last year, uh, Being Funny in a Foreign Language, as you recall, this was my number two favorite album of 2022. So I highly recommend checking it out. Maybe I'll get rid of the CD, who knows. And then we have another uh, fairly well-known well artist, a bit, uh, a bit older than than 1975, obviously. Nirvana was the album Nevermind. Uh, no description necessary. And I've also got In Utero. And yes, these are the uh, the reissues that have a whole bunch of bonus tracks and B-sides. And there you go, like that. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, never been a huge fan of Nirvana. And as you will find out here in just a second, this is as far as my uh, collection of their stuff goes, just those two albums. So. Then we have um, kind of a, this is basically comedy, I guess you'd say. Uh, Mojo Nixon and Skid Roper. They, uh, 
it's uh they're kind of weird al for uh the uh i don't know alt country set i guess maybe anyway this is their album bodacious and i actually just picked up recently their their album either before this one or after this one root hog or die that's the name of the album so yeah very weird kind of stuff on here. Kind of like a cross between Weird Al, Yan Weird Al Yankovic and Devo if they were from the South. I guess that's, th that's probably a good descriptor, I guess. Uh, their, uh, one of their hit songs, Elvis is Everywhere, where in which they show their undying adoration of Elvis Presley. And uh, so, yeah. And another interesting, uh, inter interestingly titled song here, Positively Bodies Parking Lot. Yes, you heard that correctly. And, yeah, and no, it does not make sense. And oh, and the closing track, of course, we can't forget. Don't want no foo foo haircut on my head. So yeah. they're an interesting uh, pair if you ever get to listen to them. So uh, yeah. then we have a boy band, and that's, uh, there's another boy band coming up in just a few minutes here. This is a boy band called No Authority. Uh, they only made two albums. I don't have their first one. This is their second one. Yeah, their first one was kind of. Uh, I don't know, pretty generic, pretty just standard boy band stuff. But they went uh, into a little bit of an R&B direction. They kind of retooled their sound for this sophomore album, and it's it's quite a bit better than their debut album was. Uh, yeah, good songs on here. Uh, I'm Telling You This, and uh, Can I Get Your Number is an interesting uh, a good song. Uh, Don't Get Better is one of my favorite songs on here. So, So, yeah. Uh, if you're kind of into boy bands and you have not heard about No Authority, I, I'd recommend checking them out. Then we have No Doubt, their singles collection. I used to have their individual albums, or you know the, the, the ones from their, the most popular part of their discography, but I decided, uh, eh, the hits are enough for me. So Then we have, uh, <clears throat> I guess this is another boy band, and this is a, another one of my uh, self-made... Uh, double you know double cd case things i just had a couple of their singles and so i decided to put them together into one jewel case the noise next door is is their name and what made these guys unique is it's triplets triplet brothers who uh i guess played music kind of you know uh just in their home or in their garage and somebody saw them and decided hey let's let's make a boy band out of them and cash cash in on their uh the 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 gimmick of them being triplets so they had a couple of good songs on here. Uh, might might be a little bit uh, politically incorrect, possibly. Uh, Lock Up Your Daughters is the uh, song on here. And on this one, uh, I actually like the B-side, Another Girlfriend, Another Disaster, better than the uh, the uh, A-side, Calendar Girl, on this one. So that's why I had to keep that one. So. What can I say? My Me and my uh, appreciation of boy bands... It's, yeah, I guess if I'd been getting into music now, I probably would not like boy bands at all. But it's just, I guess it's just, you know, that, that kind of throwback, that nostalgia thing <clears throat> in my brain. Uh, speaking of, NSYNC, and this is the European version of their debut album. It's got, oh gosh, like six or seven songs on this album that were, was not on the American edition of their debut album. And also the songs, uh, several of the songs that are on this album are remixed versions on this album. So, in a way, if you look for this album and pick it up, even if you already have this one, this is almost like a completely new album, essentially. So, anyway. And yes, this is the American one, as I mentioned. And then their most popular album, No Strings Attached, one of the best albums ever, in my opinion. And yes, this is a... I've got it... Uh, a single piggybacking this one. <coughs> Excuse me. The single for I'll Never Stop, which was a B-side that was not on the, actually not on the U.S. version of this album. But as you can see here, I have the, is it the Australian version? So I've got a couple of bonus tracks down here, and I'll Never Stop is one of them. So, yeah. That's one, that's one thing I did also back, you know, in around the year 2000 when boy bands were becoming really popular was I tried to, whenever possible, to get the import versions that had a bunch of bonus tracks, and uh, Celebrity is no exception. This is also a two-disc set, but it is uh, the two-disc version of the album. This uh, Disc 2 has a whole bunch of uh, B-sides on it, or, or uh, excuse me, remixes. And there are a couple of B-sides, uh, bonus tracks on 
disc one. So there you go. I am pretty much all set for my NSYNC uh, discography. Anyway, uh, this next artist you will recognize from uh, my first year, I believe, of Bargain Bag, Nuclear Valdez. Uh, I picked this one up because I like their sophomore album so much. This is their debut album, I Am I, and so am I. <laughs> and uh, their sophomore album, which was in my Bargain Bag, uh, Dream Another Dream. There are uh, several of the band members, I don't think all of them, are Latino. So, which is um, how, probably how they chose their name, Nuclear Valdez. So yeah, interesting stuff. And as we approach the halfway point, this video is going to be a little bit longer uh, unless I try to speed through the second half, just because I had such a big uh, selection of uh, recent arrivals. Anyway, Paolo Nutini is my next uh, artist here. And yes, yet another uh, originally one disc C CD that I piggybacked with a live session live sessions EP. And this is actually the main CD action on this is the Japanese version. There's the Obi strip. And it's got two, three bonus tracks on it, as you can see down there at the bottom. So. And it's actually Paolo is, uh, all except for his most recent album, all of the uh, CDs that I have of Paolo's are the Japanese version. So yes, this is his sophomore album, uh, Sunny Side Up. It's got a bit of a reggae feel to it, as you can, as kind of suggested by the cover. Uh, interesting stuff. You know, he kind of did a little something different with each of his albums. And I've also got uh, another EP here, which is the uh, uh, the uh, Preservation Hall Jazz Band uh, uh, EP. Uh, they did. This was, I believe, a record store. Yep, a record store day. Set, and I took the record store day hype sticker off the cell, the uh, plastic wrap and put it on here. So lots of good stuff. Kind of has uh, with the Preservation Hall band, kind of gives it a bit of a uh, Dixieland or or uh, New Orleans sound to the songs. Good stuff. And then his uh, third album, uh, Caustic Love, and this one actually did not have any bonus tracks, but uh, the Japanese version. And I and I still remember this. This was at the Beaverton location of Everyday Music, which is no longer there. Uh, I saw it, and yes, it, it didn't have any bonus tracks on it, but since it was the Japanese import, I decided I had to make my, my collection complete and consistent with all Japanese import versions. Yes, those are, those are the links sometimes that I'll go to just, for, uh, just to get a Japanese version of an album. And then his most recent album, uh, Last Night in the Bittersweet, this was in my top 10 of last year, and uh, I, I'm kind of surprised it uh, wasn't higher because I had been waiting eight years for his next album, and it was still, it was worth the wait. It's a very, very good album. Then we have another band that I have, oh, just two albums of theirs that I have. OAR, Of A Revolution, is the name, uh, what OAR stands for. And this is, uh, yeah, they're interesting. They've got, got a little bit of a Dave Matthews band sound to them, maybe. But also a little bit of, uh, if you cross Dave Matthews Band, maybe with uh, Better Than Ezra, very uh, eclectic uh, references, I know. But uh, I, for some reason, I've just gotten to really, really enjoy them. And this is a two-disc set, but uh, this is actually, yeah, the second disc came with the uh, the album. So, And it, it just has some uh, non-album sync non-album songs or and uh oh no live cuts no one b-side and the rest of them are non-album uh, uh live songs and i'm rambling as you can tell the other oar album i have is the one from right after that oh stories of a stranger is the name of this one and i also have their follow-up album all sides and this is originally it was originally in a white tinted jewel case i just used one of my blue ones just because it made it a little more interesting and uh, actually, no, actually, I will wait to do that until later. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to show you an interesting uh, thing about this CD's packaging, but I think I'll do that later. But uh, yeah, they kind of adopted a, before this, they had a bit of a, a bit of a jam band sound to them, which is kind of why I sort of uh, compare them to Dave Matthews Band. But for these two albums, they kind of, uh, tighten their song structures into more radio-friendly songs. Of course, OAR purists didn't really care for that. 
they thought that it watered down their sound. But uh, I, I really enjoyed these guys. Um, Shattered is a single off of this album, and one of my absolute favorite songs of theirs, Something Coming Over, is a great song. And uh, also Whatever Happened is another great track off of the album, All Sides. So I recommend it. One of my friends was unfortunately, uh, didn't seem to uh, take to their sound. So I won't, I won't lie, I'm a little disappointed, but I can't, you know, you can't make him, you can't make somebody like something. Which, that's all there is to it. It, and you know, it's going to click with me, it's not going to click with other people. And, you know, that that's life. If everything clicked with everybody, this world would be really boring when you think about it. Anyway, moving on from the philosophical crap, uh, Billy Ocean. I've got three albums by, by him. Suddenly, as well as Love Zone and Tear Down These Walls. These albums had uh, his biggest hits. Uh, we've got Caribbean Queen and uh, uh, Suddenly, the title track. And When the Going Gets Tough, the Tough Get Going, as well as There Will Be Sad Songs to Make You Cry. And then uh, we have, on this one, Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car, was uh, uh, one of my favorite songs of his. So, yeah. A great and probably underappreciated soul and R&B singer of the 80s, Billy Ocean. Then we have, what's what, this one? Oh, interesting story with this one, Octophonic, <clears throat> and with their album Monster. I heard about these guys from... Uh, Anthony Bourdain's series, No Reservations. He would uh, he would regularly show bands from whichever locales and countries that he was visiting, and these guys were from uh, Brazil or Argent Argentina, I think. And so yes, a lot of this stuff is in uh, Spanish, but they they're kind of almost a metal sound to them. Yeah, very, just very interesting, and for some reason I just found their sound very, very interesting and very captivating. So uh, their appearance on Anthony Bourdain prompted me to buy the album, order the album online, check it out. And it's it's stayed in my collection ever since, so it must be, must be pretty good. And, and next we have an album that I have kept. I've had this album since the early 90s, since it first came out, 1993. The self-titled album by October Project. They're kind of like a uh, kind of new agey Celtic sort of stuff, kind of like Enya a bit, but they're a little bit more, they've got a little bit more rhythmic, uh, a little stronger on rhythm than uh, Enya is. Enya is kind of new agey, but these guys are a little bit more, uh, a little more world beat, world music kind of stuff. But yeah, Bury My Lovely, the opening track is fantastic. One of my favorites. Um, Wall of Silence is another great one. Now I Lay Me Down is another, I mean, the whole album is just fantastic. As I said, this has been in my collection since the early to mid-90s, and it's not going anywhere. One of my favorites from that entire decade. So, yeah. Now we're moving on to a much more recent discovery, even though these guys are from roughly that same period, I think. Uh, this is a Canadian alt-rock band called The Odds. And, oh no, just Odds, I think. Kind of like Eagles. They're not the Eagles. It's just Eagles. But yes, odds with the album Neapolitan. And uh, this next one, which I think is the one that I found, that I uh, discovered them by, which was in a bargain bag. And that is uh, Bedbugs. And then their follow-up album, uh, Good Weird Feeling. So, yes, very interesting stuff. Um, yes, obviously, I like them since one CD in a bargain bag uh, prompted me to pick up two others. So, Good stuff. I recommend checking them out. Then we have The Offspring, their greatest hits. Uh, yeah. As the hype sticker says, 14 songs you know. You just know these songs. And this is funny because The Offspring is a band, that, uh, the kind of a band that I typically would not enjoy. But for some reason, just they've, they've just got that unique uniqueness in their sound. Uh, Come Out and Play, Keep Them Separated, uh, great song, and uh, Gone Away. Pretty fly for a white guy. Yeah, pretty fly for a white guy. White guy. I, I okay. You you know you're a little weird when you've, you're obsessed with Weird Al when you can't remember when you can't keep straight the original song title and the the title of the Weird Al parody. So yes, pretty fly for a rabbi is Weird Al's version, and uh, so yeah, 
those and yes, uh, Pretty Fly for a Rabbi Weird Al's parody is kind of what made me check out uh, the Offspring in more in more uh, depth. So good stuff. And then this is another very interesting band. They're called Olabel, and a fair amount of this album is made up of um, contemporary adaptations of old spirituals. Again, something kind of like The Offspring, but in a totally different vein. The kind of thing that I ordinarily wouldn't wouldn't uh, like, or you know, wouldn't glom onto. Uh, for some, but for some reason, they give these songs a bit of an Americana twist. Uh, so yeah, it's, they're they're kind of an interesting band, and I tried their sophomore album, uh, didn't care much for it, but uh, yeah, their debut album, self-titled, is interesting stuff. Uh, now we're moving on to an artist. I have four of their albums, but you have probably never heard of them, unless you are from uh, the Eugene area or uh, were a um, student at the University of Oregon. This is their a cappella group, On the Rocks, and this is uh, their their self-titled. Yeah, I think their self-titled album, I think their first one. Uh, they do... This is the group that got me interested in an alt-rock group called Guster, which obviously I, I, I covered in whatever chapter that was of my CD collection. Um, and because they, they covered Center of Attention, which is one of their songs, and I thought there was another one that they covered, maybe not, uh, on this on this album. Maybe they do it on a future album, but yeah. Center of Attention by Guster was is one of the songs they cover on here. Uh, For the Longest Time, a Billy Joel song. And Romeo and Juliet, the uh, Dire Straits hit. But yeah, Crash Into Me, the Dave Matthews Band song. Pretty much their entire repertoire is covers, so I could just keep going and going on that. Uh, but I'm... This album is like 47, or this video is like 47 minutes long. I want to try and keep it under an hour, so I'm going to keep moving on here. Uh, but I've got their follow-up album, The Backgammon Sessions. They were kind of fun and clever with their album titles, I have to say. And uh, let's see, uh, Yellow, the Coldplay song. And uh, My Own Worst Enemy, which I believe was a cover of a lit song. This was the era that they, these albums were from, like, the first half of the 2000s. And then... Uh, can't remember. Oh, in the in the end, which is a uh, Lincoln Park song, and then their next album called Full Coverage, and oh, here is a picture you can't really see very well, but this is the uh, amphitheater at the Student Union, the op open air amphitheater, and that's where they would always perform pre pandemic. They would give a a free concert uh, every Friday afternoon, I think it was. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's happened since the pandemic. Uh, Kyrie, the Mr. Mr. song. And uh, let's see, what else can I... Uh, oh, Hallelujah, the uh, Leonard Cohen song. Disco Inferno, Disco Inferno, the disco song. Stacy's Mom, the um, uh, Fountains of Wayne song. So. And then the last of their albums that I own is called The Green Room. And uh, yeah, again, a bunch of... Oh, Never Gonna Give You Up, the Rick Astley uh, song. And no, I'm not rickrolling you by saying that. It's actually on here. Uh, so, yeah. Save a horse, ride a cowboy. <laughs> I can't remember who it was that uh, did that song, but anyway. And, oh, Please Don't Tell Her, which is a Jason Mraz song. Yeah. They were a fun, fun group. Uh, yes. I, I, I could talk on about them, but anyway. Another artist that I have for... Oh, no, I have five of their albums. I have all five of their albums. One Direction... I won't go into detail on these guys, except to say that their first three albums I have international versions of that have a few bonus tracks on. Uh, this is the, that was uh, Up All Night, the debut debut album, and then Take Me Home, the sophomore album, which has five bonus tracks over here, and then Midnight Memories, which is the uh, the ultimate edition, and I believe this is the same one that was in a square bound book version. For, you know, the U.S., this is actually a jewel case version from Southeast Asia? Australia. The Australian version. And it's got the, uh, what was it, three or four bonus tracks that weren't on the uh, standard version. But the last two albums I have are just their regular versions. Uh, four. And Made in the AM. I used to have just two or three of their albums, and I when I realized, okay, five was all they made, okay... Might as well just go ahead and get the rest of their albums. Make the discography complete. Why the heck not? And then we have One Republic. 
as this is their debut album, uh, Dreaming Out Loud. Album titles today are just not in my, not in my memory bank for some reason. So yes, uh, of course, uh, I don't need to talk about that album. You've got you know, the the big hits that everybody enjoys. Um, uh, which one was it? Oh, um, Apologize, yes. And Stop and Stare was one of my favorite songs on their debut album. And their sophomore album, Waking Up. And I can't remember which other songs I like off of that album. Then we have, yeah, this video is probably going to be more than an hour. Sorry about that. But hey, it's in chapters. You can come back and watch the rest of the chapters later, right? Here we have a, an artist that um, I discovered uh, them through their third album, which was released in the States. Uh, back in the early 90s, it was one of those albums that, you know, kind of like uh, October Project, it's one of those albums that I bought back in the early 90s. It stayed in my collection ever since, because I love it. But recently I went back and picked up their first two albums, uh, which were only released in Canada, because they are a Canadian group, a group of Canadian origin. One to One is their name, and Forward Your Emotions is their, the name of their debut album. This was actually re-released. This was originally put out in 1985. It was re-released in 2010 on Wounded Bird Records. And yes, Louise Rennie is the vocalist and Leslie Howe is the uh, instrumentalist. And yes, good stuff. Just uh, I don't know what to say. I, I, I've loved them for so long that I can't really describe their music. It's like, it's their music. You know, that's that stuff, you know. <clears throat> and I also found, I think I found this one on eBay. Uh, it was, uh, I guess, I guess their self-titled album, One to One. Yes, the, their name is spelled out here, but the name of the album is numerical, One to One. So, <clears throat> if you can call that self-titled, it's, it's their self-titled album. And this was from 1988, but uh, this is the original issue. They're, they never uh, reissued it. Uh, the song Love Child, which was <clears throat> a uh, Supremes cover, I think, a uh, Supreme song, I think. They do the uh, they do a cover that here, and yes, um, it is you know early '90s stuff, so it is very much uh, synth, lots of synths in it. In a way, I guess it kind of belongs in the '80s more than the '90s because it just has a very much of a new wave '80s sound to it. Uh, but it's just like I said, it's just wonderful. And here is the album that I discovered them through, and this was. I believe this was a modest hit in the States, so that it was their attempt at a crossover. It didn't really pan out because they were basically a one-hit wonder in the States, but their album Imagine It. And uh, yes, I, like I said, I have loved this album ever since. Uh, it's um, too dark to read the... Um, oh no, uh, 1992 is when it was uh, put out, so yes. I've owned it since 1992, and one of the reasons... One of the things that I love about these guys is in their, their acknowledgments, in the liner notes, one of the groups of people they, they thank is the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation. I guess just because they're big Star Trek fans, or, or were at the time at least. So okay. when, they when they thank the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation, how can I not be on their side? You know. Really. But uh, yeah, the songs uh, Peace of Mind, Love Goes On, that was their big hit. But I, I could read the entire track list on this. This is one of those albums that I truly love every single song on it. So yeah. Check out Imagine It by One to One. A, a must listen in my opinion. Then we have an album that uh, a lot of you might not even know that he put out an album, except that I have mentioned it a couple of times. Jerry Orbach. Yes, this was in my sister's collection. Uh, and before he became uh, famous for Lenny Briscoe on Law & Order, he was on Broadway. He was a Broadway actor, or at least uh, possibly he probably started off Broadway. I don't know if he was ever actually on Broadway or not, but this is a collection of uh, show tunes, uh, songs from the stage. Uh, yes, and he has a fantastic voice. Just You never would know it, especially if all you know him as is Lenny Briscoe on Law & Order. You never would have thought he had a great voice, but yeah. One of the amazing discoveries... <clears throat> Thanks to my sister. Oh, I was going to try and make it through the whole video without taking another drink of water, but it, was, no, it wasn't going to happen. So, yeah. There were some amazing discoveries in my sister's CD collection, but this may have been the most interesting one. The most unexpected, definitely. Then we have Roy Orbison. 
this is a guy you you know has made records. Uh, yeah, Roy Orbison, The Essential, all of his big big hits on, are on here. My favorite my favorite of his songs is actually one of his last, and that was You Got It. Uh, yeah, great stuff. And then this one, I will, I I promise you, I will eventually make another album diaries video. I made one a year and a half ago and kept and saying I was going to make more that same year. I know. But uh, this is a CD, or an album that I'm going to cover in an album diaries video, so I won't talk much about it. It's a group called The Origin. This is their self-titled album. Discovered them quite by accident, and uh, this is just uh, fantastic stuff. Again, kind of like one to one. Every single song on here I just love. There's a great story behind it that I will cover in an Album Diaries video. Talking about it now is actually making me want to do an Album Diaries video, so keep your fingers crossed that it happens soon. And this is their sophomore album, Bend. And uh, yeah, great pop rock uh, group. And I believe that was the only, those were the only two albums they made. And then we have another CD, thanks to my sister. This is Tony Orlando and Dawn, the ultimate collection, the de the definitive collection. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sure there's a big difference between ultimate and definitive. Anyway, yes, uh, knock three times, and uh, uh, what was the other one? Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, and I'm sure there's another couple of songs that uh, they were famous for. But yes, very very kitschy, uh, almost punchline, uh, cheesy stuff, but. My sister grew up in the 70s, so she loved that stuff, and I will not part with that CD because uh, it was part of her, one of the artists that I know she loved, and so I'm not parting with that one. Here's an artist that you have probably never heard of. Uh, they are a British, a British group? I actually can't remember. Excuse me. No, actually, I think they are an American group, but for some reason... They never made it big in America. They only made it big in the, in the UK. I may be wrong about that. I'll have to look it up. They're called Orson. And this is their first album, uh, Bright Idea. Great, um, not quite power pop. They're a bit more rock, uh, you know, straight ahead rock. But uh, lots of great hooks in their songs. I mean, just fantastic stuff. Bright Idea is an, a great song of theirs. And uh, this is actually the, if I remember correctly, yep, the Japanese version. And one of the bonus tracks on here is I Can't Go For That, a cover of the Hall & Oates song. So, but yes, a great, great band. And I've got their sophomore album, Culture Vultures. And uh, yeah, both of the albums just have a great selection of songs on here. Uh, Radio, which has to do with music, so you, you'll know that I'm, uh, I love that song. And uh, Ain't No Party is another good song on here, so yeah. I don't know if Orson is available on Spotify or, or Apple Music or anything, but if they are, I recommend checking them out. And uh, then we have another artist. Uh, this is an artist that I'm pretty sure you are familiar with. Ozzy Osbourne, The Essential, of course, his biggest, biggest hits. Uh, I do, Does he have any? Uh, um, can't remember the name, the name of his band. Black Sabbath. Can't remember if there are any, any Sabbath hits on here or not. That's what I was getting at. Uh, so let's make this video a little bit longer, shall we? Anyway, uh, and his uh, second most recent album, uh, Ordinary Man. I just did not care for Patient Number 9. I don't know why, but I do enjoy this album. So yes, there we go. And here we have another album from my sister's collection and another uh, cheesy 70s group, The Osmonds, Osmond Mania. And this has uh, some of the Osman Brothers solo hits, uh, of course, most no most notably Donnie. Uh, but I believe there's some other. Oh, and he he has there's some uh, Donnie and Marie hits on here as well. So this is pretty much a very well-rounded, yet concise one disc uh, uh, collection of the Osmonds' best songs. So yeah. And I think my sister had a crush on Donnie Osman when she was young. So not sure about that, but anyway. <clears throat> this next one, I think you saw in a haul video recently, recent acquisition, uh, Donny Osmond, uh, Love Songs of the 70s. I found this at one of the uh, St. Vinny's stores, I believe, and for, for $1, it was still sealed. And it's actually got a, um, it's got a DVD on here that I have not watched yet, so I'll need to watch that. And then Donny's most recent album, Start Again, which had 
one of my favorite pop songs of the decade so far. I'm, I'm just going to say it because I can't imagine myself glomming onto any other new song for the rest of the 2020s any more than I did the song Who by Donny Osmond. A kick-ass pop funk groove on here. And the rest of this album is, is just great. I mean, this album should have gotten a major label release. It would have been really, uh, it would have been a hit, I think if it gotten the publicity push that a major label release uh, can get. So, yes, too bad. And, 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 I don't know, maybe Donnie didn't want to run the risk of blowing up again in popularity like he did before. I don't know. Anyway, he still deserves to, though. That's what I think. Anyway, uh, here we have another boy band that you probably haven't heard of, OTT. Um, Over the Top, I think, is what that stands for. But, uh, yes, this was their one and only album. This one's for you. And, uh, yes, this is actually a Malaysian, no, uh, um, Korean, I think, import. Yes. The characters are more intricate uh, in here than uh, Japanese, so that's kind of how you can tell. But, uh, yes, uh, they had a couple of really, really good, good songs that I think would have been hits in the States. Um, the Story of Love was uh, one of their big hits. And they had a few other... Okay, trying to get this card back into the uh, thing here. Come on. There we go. And But interestingly, though, yes, I've got the, uh, the Story of Love single piggybacked on here because the single version is completely different than the mix that's on this album. I don't know why. But uh, <coughs> uh, they do a cover of... Oh, All Out of Love, the Air Supply song. And is Let Me In a... Uh, I can't remember. I, I, I don't have time to look. I don't want to make this video any, any longer. I was going to say, I thought that they maybe did a cover of an Osmond Brothers song on this album, but I can't remember. Anyway, interesting stuff. You know, it's another write-up. Uh, uh, chalk that up to my uh, boy band obsession of uh, days past. <clears throat> And speaking tangentially of boy bands, here we have Mark Owen. Uh, he is a member of Take That, a British boy band. This is a solo album of his, uh, In Your Own Time. And I still remember where I got this. I got this at the Tower Records up in Portland on one of the one of my last visits. It was in the Imports Clearance Bin. So this is a UK import. And uh, Four Minute Warning is a great song on here. And uh, Crush is probably my favorite song on here. And no, it is not the David Archuleta song. It's a completely different song with the same the same title. But one thing that kind of got me interested in this is it was the first time I discovered that Espen Lind has songwriting credits outside of the stuff that he did, he did himself, the stuff he recorded himself. And one of the songs, I can't remember which one it was now, uh, it was written or co-written by Espen Lind. And that was one reason why I kind of picked up the album. And then... The last artist I will be featuring today, I've got two of his albums here, is Owsley. I think I've talked about him before. A great power pop artist. Uh, this is his self-titled debut album. And he was a session musician and a live uh, a member of the touring band of Amy Grant for a long, long time before he made uh, a mark of his own. Uh, unfortunately, he did not make much of a splash, which is compl a complete injustice because this guy is just fantastic. Uh, he was, un unfortunately, he uh, passed away from suicide uh, back in around 2010, I think it was. Uh, one of the huge, biggest tragedies, in my opinion, all, of all time in the world of music. Because he was just fantastic. And this is one of those albums, every song is just fantastic. It's excellent. And I've got the... I thought this was the Japanese version. Uh, but yes, it is the Japanese version, but for some reason I don't have the Obi strip in it. Shame on me. I wonder if I got it used. I might have gotten it used and it didn't have the Obi with it. But yeah, it's got a couple of bonus tracks on here. Anyway, every song on there is fantastic. Um, I do have his sophomore and final album, The Hard Way. Unfortunately, this one didn't make nearly the impact on me that his debut did. Uh, still very, very good songs. And this was actually done several years after his debut. But uh, yeah. 
a great artist, um, underappreciated, and his career was unfor- unfortunately cut way too short um, by his own hand, which makes it even more tragic. So uh, as much as I hate to uh, put, you know, to end this video on that much of a down note, uh, I will try desperately not to make you wait for Chapter 16 of my Hold Arn CD collection, as long as I made you wait for Chapter 15. How's that for an up note to end this video on? Anyway, that's it for my Hold Arn CD collection, Chapter 15. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notification bell each time, uh, so that you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Brain fry. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.